Next speaker is going to be Dr. Giaz, also one of our radiation oncologists, and he's going to share his tremendous experience with the spine serotactic radiosurgery. All right, thank you very much. It's an honor to be invited to uh, speak to you all about stereotactic radiation. Um, and uh, my goals here are to just introduce the concept of stereotactic radiation for both skull base targets and the spine. Why is it done? When is it done? Um, uh, how is it done? And, and in fact, what are the results? What kind of data do we have for these patients? So um, as, as Dr. Groshans alluded to, um, typically radiation Therapy, when it's delivered, it's delivered in fractions, in small doses given daily over the course of six to nine weeks of treatment. And the reason is, um, is because, typically speaking, uh, the target, the tumor, is very close to normal tissue that's sensitive to radiation. And by breaking the dose up into small doses over a period of time, that allows for the normal tissue to heal up from the damage caused by radiation, uh, and the tumors don't have the same ability to heal up from that. Uh, and so that's why, the that's why traditional radiation is delivered over small fractions um, over a period of time. Uh, and this is illustrated by, by, by this chart, which um, along the x-axis is dose. Uh, so uh, if you go uh, to the right, it's a higher dose. And then on the y-axis, we have uh, tumor control here on the left and tissue, uh, normal tissue damage here on the right. So the goal is to deliver a dose of radiation that's going to maximize tumor control and minimize tissue damage. And the separation um, that we get from fractionating radiation is called the therapeutic window. Um, and we, we can see here that um, using a very uh, primitive radiation beam arrangement, uh, a target that perhaps is in the sacrum um, uh, can receive uh, the same dose of, uh, or I'm sorry, normal tissue right in front of the sacrum, which could include the rectum, can receive the same dose as the target which is in the sacrum. And so we really want to um, take advantage of this therapeutic window to minimize side effects. However, when we deal with radio-resistant histology with, with tumors that don't respond to um, uh, traditional doses of radiation, and when we also deal with tissues that have been previously irradiated, uh, this can be a particular challenge. Um, we, if, if the normal tissue is in the same target as the tumor, um, uh, then there may not be a dose of radiation that we can uh, deliver safely to get adequate tumor control. And as Dr. Groshans explained, this is where particle therapy comes in and where proton therapy really shines in patients with chordoma, which is considered a radio-resistant histology. So um, how can we deliver an effective dose of radiation to, tu to tumors near uh, critical normal tissue? Um, we, we have long-term uh, data which establishes the safety and efficacy of particle therapy in treating chordoma over the course of uh, seven plus weeks. However, over the last um, 15 to 20 years, there have been advances in the delivery of non-particle therapy or x-ray therapy um, that allows us to de deliver the radiation very precisely and also to conform that dose of radiation um, to uh, the target tissue. Um, and, and, and we've used these uh, concepts very effectively in treating patients with metastatic disease. So um, the precise delivery of one or a few fractions of radiation to the target with minimal dose to nearby critical structures can be done with stereotactic radiosurgery. Um, and so here's an example on the left where uh, uh, an intracranial target, a target within the head, is being treated with a gamma knife. So there's dose uh, delivered very precisely to the target, and it rapidly falls off, um, protecting nearby critical structures. And on the right, here's an example of stereotactic radiosurgery being delivered to uh, a target uh, in the spine, which is within millimeters of the spinal cord. So now we can shape and bend the radiation around the spinal canal and deliver an ablative dose of radiation to a target within millimeters. And delivering ultra-high doses of radiation in one or a few fractions uh, is as powerful as delivering small doses over 33-plus fractions. Um, and the, the radiobiologic modeling that we have now doesn't completely explain 
that. So uh, the idea is that stereotactic radiosurgery, delivering radiation in ultra-high doses um, uh, in one or a few fractions may ind induce changes beyond DNA damage. Um, so there may be changes in the surrounding uh, vasculature, so the blood supply can be affected, um, or, and there's a, a theoretically an activation of an immune response in, 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 in response to stereotactic radiation delivery. So what are the uses in patients with chordoma? Well, clearly, um, as, as, as Dr. DeMonte and Dr. Raza pointed out, um, uh, stereotactic radiosurgery can be very useful in tr retreating tumors which, has, which have previously received radiation. Um, in addition to that, uh, re uh, stereotactic radiosurgery in certain circumstances can be used to primarily treat radioresistant tumors like chordoma. There are two key elements of stereotactic radiation, as I alluded to earlier, conformal treatment as well as precise setup and targeting. And for targets within the head, uh, there are many tools that can be used to deliver stereotactic radiosurgery. Uh, this is a tool that we use. It's called the Gamma Knife. Um, uh, and uh, this is the gamma knife perfection here on the left. Uh, and, and what you may be able to tell is this involves a patient laying uh, on the treatment couch. There is a head frame that immobilizes the patient. It anchors to the skull. And, and the patient is advanced into this radiation machine that has um, uh, 192 cobalt sources, which are directed at the tumor. And so it's designed primarily to treat targets in, in the head. Uh, down here is the latest version of the Gamma Knife unit, which we will, uh, which we will get um, presumably early next year. Um, and it's slightly different. It does not involve a frame uh, 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 bolted to the head. It's a frameless system using uh, a mask. And it has this onboard CT scanner that helps us localize uh, the tumor uh, in near real time. So what's the data that we have to support this? And so um, uh, this is one large report uh, from the North American Gamma Knife Consortium, which uh, involves 71 patients who underwent stereotactic radiation for skull-based chordoma. Um, 50 of those uh, did not have a prior uh, history of radiation to the target, but 21 did. And the five-year local control rate was about 66%. And one interesting finding they had was that if we could deliver um, at least a dose of 15 gray in the single dose, that seemed to, to correlate strongly with local control long term. Um, and so this uh, points to uh, the importance of delivering an adequate dose of radiation uh, to the target. Uh, one thing I will mention is that for intracranial targets in particular, using the gamma knife, these targets do have to be relatively small. Um, so it's an excellent option for relatively small targets, and it can be used in the recurrent setting after prior radiation. Um, uh, and it can be considered as a primary tre treatment uh, after maximal safe surgical resection, though fractionated radiation clearly remains the standard. You get a better margin with fractionated radiation, um, and so uh, that is considered the standard approach. So how about for spinal targets? We can't use the gamma knife to treat spinal targets in the mobile spine, in the thoracic lumbar, or in the sacrum. So how do we deliver submillimeter, uh, uh, how do we deliver ablative doses of radiation with submillimeter accuracy without a traditional frame for immobilization? This is something that has uh, developed and advanced over the past 15 years. Um, so it's a relatively new technique in the radiation world. It involves, um, rigid immobilization, which uh, I'll show you an example of that, and also image guidance, which means um, we use CT scans uh, and x-ray technology uh, in the treatment room uh, just prior to radiation delivery, delivery to uh, assure that we have the patient lined up with submillimeter accuracy. So this is the tool that's used to deliver um, uh, radiation to uh, the spine. Uh, it's called a linear accelerator. And so the radiation uh, is uh, produced and exits this treatment head and is targeted um, uh, to uh, the patient. Uh, the radiation, as it exits the treatment head, is shaped by these uh, lead leaves called multi-leaf collimators. And um, an advance that occurred in the 1990s involved um, 
uh, modulating the intensity of the radiation beam. So what that means is that these lead leaves can move while the beam is on um, and, and form different uh, shapes and changes the intensity of the beam as it points to uh, the target in the body. So what does that allow us to do? Well, that allows us to um, uh, shape the radiation in ways that um, uh, really it hasn't been done before. And so on the left here, we see a, a, a very basic radiation um, uh, delivery plan to the spine, where the radiation enters from the front and enters from the back. Um, and what we can see here is this, this red line denotes the prescription dose um, that's being delivered to the tissue. So if our target's sitting here in the bone, we see that the spinal canal gets the same dose of radiation as the target that's sitting in the bone, and the bowel up front gets the same radiation dose. And this is with traditional x-rays. Um, however, with intensity modulated radiation, um, what we can do is now concentrate the radiation to the tumor, which is located in the bone, and shape the high-dose radiation around the spinal canal and protect nearby critical structures like the spinal cord. So then that allows us to concentrate the radiation and, uh, uh, into, into one or a few fractions and deliver it uh, with ablative intent. This is the patient experience. Uh, this is the immobilization uh, that we use. And so patients are immobilized. Again, this is the type of radiation. When it's delivered to the spine, it has to be done with submillimeter accuracy. Um, given that the spinal cord uh, generally sits within millimeters of the tumor. And so the way we accomplish that, this is a large cradle that um, uh, is customized to each patient. There's a plastic sheet that goes over the front. The air is vacuumed out of that sheet to keep patients immobilized. And then in the treatment room, we use advanced image guidance techniques. So um, again, this is the linear accelerator machine here. This is the couch that the patient lays on. And attached to this linear uh, accelerator is a, um, a, a KV CT scan apparatus. Um, so we can obtain CT scans while the patient is in position to get treated um, just before the treatment can occur so that minor positional adjustments can be made. Uh, in addition, there are other technologies in this room uh, to offer independent verification of patient alignment so that the radiation can be delivered extremely precisely. So is it effective? So yes, it, it's very effective in patients with spinal metastases. And this is, this is the most common use for uh, this technology at MD Anderson. And we've run prospective clinical trials to show that the one-year local control in patients with metastatic disease is 90%. In addition to that, it can be delivered safely. There are minimal toxicities, um, and, and we estimate a less than 1% risk of spinal cord damage. How about for chordoma? There's early data, uh, which, is, which is promising, um, that suggests that stereotactic radiosurgery can be very effective uh, in the management of patients with chordomas of the spine of the sacrum. This is a retrospective study from Memorial Sloan Kettering, published a few years ago, involving 24 patients with uh, chordoma, and the median follow-up was 24 months. So again, uh, limited follow-up in this patient population. We don't have five and 10-year data yet, but the local control rate was 95%. Um, six of the 13 patients uh, uh, avoided surgery altogether. I'm sorry, six of the 13 patients needed surgery, seven avoided surgery. And in the path pathology from the surgery, we see that uh, three of those six patients that underwent surgery had near total necrosis or cell death um, uh, at the site. So it's a promising tool, um, uh, but we are still awaiting longer term uh, data. I'm going to show an example here of a patient that, that we treated. Uh, in 2014, this is a patient that had uh, a chordoma metastasis uh, to the paraspinal space right next to uh, the spine at L2. It's a very uh, large lesion, um, and we treated it with stereotactic radiation, delivering a dose of 24 gray in one fraction of radiation, um, again, carving the radiation dose around the spinal canal, avoiding the kidney uh, and, and limiting dose to the bowel. This is a dose volume histogram. So what we see here is, is that the, the, the t uh, tumor target is in red. It's receiving um, an excellent dose of radiation. Normal structures are here on the left. So this shows the separation uh, of, of, of dose between the target and normal structures. 
Again, this is the original scan in August of 2014. The patient got a single dose of radiation, um, and this is nearly two years later, and we hardly see that there was any evidence of disease there. It almost looks as though the patient had this disease surgically removed, but no, in fact, it was just treated with a single dose of radiation. So again, the standard of care involves on-block surgical resection for uh, mobile spine targets when feasible, but for high-risk patients, a dose-escalated radiation uh, does improve local control. This is largely done with fractionated radiation um, using particle therapy. However, stereotactic radio surgery may serve as an effective treatment option for select patients with chordoma. We are still awaiting long-term efficacy and toxicity data, um, but this is a promising tool in our armament. Thank you.